Hi, yeah, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's Beginners Project video. I hope you are all well. Um, big thanks for all of the comments on all of the previous videos. It's always good. Uh, it's always good to receive comments. If I haven't got back to you yet, then I will do very, very soon. Now, this week's project, um, you're going to need a few of these little cork bits, um, which you can pick up um, at your local wood turning store or online. They're really, really cheap, and um, together with the wood they make a very very effect, effective and pretty um, bottle stopper. So we're going to look at two different methods of turning these bottle stoppers. One we're going to turn um, using a chuck method and the other one we're going to turn between centres. Um, two very different methods but very very similar um, results at the end. So I'm going to stop gassing and let's get on with showing you how to turn the bottle stoppers using two different methods. Right, for the first part of this video I'm going to show you how to turn a very inexpensive bottle stopper in a chuck and then in the second part of the video I'll show you how to do it in between centres. So for both projects you need to get the piece round so let's do that first. When you've got your piece between centres make sure that everything is locked down nice and tight and the piece is free spinning in the lathe and that it's not hitting your tool rest. Bring the lathe up to speed, face shield on Now the blank is nice and round and in the chuck, everything's nice and firm, which is great. Um, we need to have a think now about the diameter and the length, or rather the size, <laughs> of the bottle stopper itself. Remember you need to have a spigot at the end on which the cork is going to sit. And then you need to have a think about how big you want your actual stopper handle to be. So. Remember that you've got a bit at the end where the live centre dives in or pokes in, so you need to be able to turn that away so it's sort of rounded. Then a bit of length for the handle, and then you need the length of the cork. So from the bottom of the stopper, take the cork and make a mark to the left of that and that is how long we want our bottle stopper to be. Now we need to have a think about how wide we want the bottle stopper to be. The cork is 22.6, call it 23 mil. 23 mil so if we make our actual stopper itself 30 mil so I'm going to set the calipers up to 30 mil because I'm using only the standard set of tools I'm going to use the diamond tip parting tool so face shield back on and we'll take all of this from here back to there down to 30 mil we've got a really rough shape and you can go crazy you don't have to make every bottle stopper 30 mil you can make it bigger and fatter depending upon the kind of bottle stopper you want to make so if we put the cork back up and rest it against the wall that we've created here 
we can leave a mark there which will tell us the length of the cork and where to stop the design of the actual stopper handle. So then we can take um, the diamond tip parting tool again and work our way down just a little bit to create a wall at the end of the bottle stopper handle. take our spindle gouge and start getting creative with the curves on the actual bottle stopper top itself. Now what we want to do, bottle stoppers should really have a, a curved top, not a point, because when you put a bottle stopper in you put it in like that. So a nice round top to sit in the, in the palm of the hand is, uh, is desirable. So to give the piece as much stability as possible, for as much as we can of the turning, we're going to keep the tails, the tail stock um, up and in place. So let's create just a, a few little curves, a little cove in there, a really simple bottle stopper. So get the tool rest as close as you can and at the right height for the spindle gouge. So there's our really, really basic shape. I can now move the tail stock away and turn the tool rest round to give me access to the top. So I can just round that off nicely. There we are, <clears throat> that'll do, that's quite nice. Now let's look at making the cork fit. Take your calipers or a ruler and measure the internal diameter of the cork. And I can see that says 12.39 millimetres. So I need to get this bit down to 12.39 millimetres so the cork will fit. It would be nice if the <laughs> it would be nice if the corks were actually drilled centrally, but it is just an inexpensive bottle stopper. So let's get. That. 
and now that's down to the right diameter I can start to part off by making a little relief cut here so I part off to the left of the very bottom. Like that. So I've now got a little step where I know I can part off from and it'll make it easier with the parting tool. And now we can finish we can finish the actual stopper itself. So I will sand that down to about 600 uh, and then uh, I'll call that done. Now the actual stopper itself is sanded down to 600. I've not done any finishing, any sanding at all on uh, on the spigot for the cork because the cork's going to be inside it, and also um, having a, an unfinished surface there will be uh, will be good for the glue to key to. Um, and also when sanding you. Um, well, any wood really, but you and other toxic woods in particular, a respirator or some kind of gas mask is really, really important. I'm happy with that. And then the very last job is just to part off the piece, which I'll use the thin parting tool for. Face shield on. And as usual, when I'm supporting the piece when turning off, I'll just keep a little bit of towel between my fingers and the wood and then part it off nice and simply. Just like that, really, really simple. Now we've got a little nub on the end that we need to deal with. We can either do that by hand, or if we've got a Jacob's chuck like so, or like that one, we can put the Jacob's chuck into the lathe and use our bowl sander and maybe a 120 grit pad. Just to smooth off the end of it, remembering to wear your respirator. And you can sand that down, you can sand that end bit down to 600 if you want to. And then the last thing to do is to get the cork, get the cork and uh, slide it on. Uh, there, a really, really inexpensive but very pretty little bottle stopper. Right. Let's show you how I would do it in between centres now. Right, so between centres this time I've got a little lump of um, walnut, um, which is a lovely, lovely piece of wood, and we need to get it round first of all. Now that we're down to round and we're turning between centres, you need to remember that you've got to keep the wood supported throughout the length. 
<clears throat> because you can't take the tailstock away because it will fall off. Um, so your bottle stopper needs to be turned in between, well, in between the centres really. It, um, so you've got to keep some wood at either end of the bottle stopper, so the top and the bottom of the bottle stopper, in order to turn it successfully. Remembering on the right hand side that your live centre is going to be pushing in the wood. So if you, if you make a mark 5 to 10 millimetres in from the right hand side, you know that when you come to finish it, you won't have a, a dimple left and also leave a mark on the left hand side um, for the block of wood that's going to support the piece on the left. So if we take another cork now this this particular piece is as thick as I want it to be which is for reference 35mm ish 34 and a half, there you go if you want to be precise. Um, and I want the bottle stopper to be, or the actual top itself, I want to be about there. So the right hand end, this bit here, is going to be the bottle stopper itself, or the handle, holder, holdy thing, technical term, the holdy thing. And then the spigot on which it's going to be held will be about there and you can just easily measure the length of the cork like so. Now I want to start to turn the cork bit down so I'll knock that bit down a little bit so I can see exactly where the spigot is going to be and then I'll shape the actual main part of the stopper. Sharpened this tool now which um, should make a bit of difference. And I broke a nail when I was sharpening it as well. I'm such a girl. <laughs> right let's grab the spindle gouge and uh, start to shape the top. Remember I need to keep some wood at the top here to support the piece uh, in between the centres. And I've got the tool rest as close as I can. And I'm going to eat away at this bit over here on the right first. fairly simple, it doesn't need to be overly fancy but of course you can go as fancy as you want. Um, and as you can see on the right hand side here I've still got a little nub of wood uh, supporting the piece on the right hand end and obviously some meat left over here on the left. Now I need to turn this bit down, the spigot for the cork itself and so just to double check my measurements on the cork, 12.5 mil. So I need to turn the spigot down to 12.5 mil, which I'll do with the diamond tip parting tool. Very carefully because the right hand end here is a little bit weaker. spigot for the cork turned down to the right diameter. Now just as a point of reference it would be easier to turn the spigot down for the cork before making the right hand end very thin. Just purely because as it was turning there was a little bit of vibration there. Can you see that? 
there's just a little bit of vibration there which um, causes the tool to chatter um, which isn't ideal um, but because this piece is going to be going inside the cork it's not going to be seen but it would be a little bit more preferable to finish the top or to get down to a thin point on the right hand end here after you have turned the spigot for the cork. Now I can finish it down to 600 like I did the previous bottle stopper um, and go through the whole finishing process again. So the piece is now finished down to 600 sealed and uh, and uh, glossed up with uh, Hampshire Sheen and now we need to get it off the lathe um, and what we what we'll do is we will take the diamond tip parting tool and work our way down uh, work our way down that line until we get as thin as we can possibly go and then we can take it off the lathe from there. Actually change your plan we'll use the thin parting tool is as far as you want to go okay that's very very thin so perhaps if you are a beginner then a few millimeters thicker would be um, would be better for you but now that's all we can do for the moment so we can take the tailstock away or we can retract the quill take the piece off the drive center snap off the end and snap off the bottom or you could use a saw and then we can use the the Jacobs chuck or rather if you've got a Jacobs chuck push it into your tail stop into your headstock and then Too fast. <laughs> Slow the lathe down. And then work your way down the grits until you have a nice shiny bit. Nice shiny bottle stopper. And there, that's down to 400. And then when you've gone down through all the grits, you can use your shellac. Now you probably won't get as good a finish doing it like that as you will do actually properly on the lathe using a chuck. But it is still a very effective method of creating a very attractive bottle stopper. If you don't have a Jacobs chuck, you can just use... Um, a bowl sander um, on a power drill or even just do it by hand it's entirely up to you um, and what tools you have available now just to finish off with um, with the top of the bottle stopper what I use is um, I sometimes use a, a polishing mop like this you don't have to use it you can do it um, by hand um, yeah, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll show you just the, the buffing mop. Okay. 
There we are. It's not quite as good a finish um, as I said, but it is still more than acceptable for a piece that's been turned between centres. And then finally you can slide on slide on your cork and perhaps with a bit of super glue uh, to finish off the piece. And there we are, there are two very pretty little bottle stoppers um, using two different methods on the lathe, one with a chuck and one in between centres. Thank you very much indeed for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this week's um, beginner's project. Um, please do like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will look forward to seeing you next week for another beginner's project video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.